Hello and welcome to Bloomberg TV India's special series, Namozier, where we hold conversations with everyone from politics to the economy to business on the first year of Prime Minister Narendra Modi's administration. And today, joining me is a very special guest, P. Murli Dar Rao, the National General Secretary of the Bharatiya Janata Party. Mr. Rao, thank you so much for joining us on Bloomberg TV India. Uh, a historical mandate, uh, almost uh, to the date a year ago, uh, and beyond the expectations, what is the reality of uh, the state of affairs now that a year of the Narendra Modi administration and the Bharati Janata Party's stunning electoral success, not just in the federal elections, but even in many state assemblies after that. How uh, do you see the situation now? Definitely, this uh, mandate was an extraordinary mandate. After 30 years, any party getting this, in, you know, single-handedly the majority. So that way, it was an overwhelming and uh, extraordinary mandate. Narendra Modi uh, leadership has got from the people and the BJP as a party. And expectations are also very high. It have been in the last one year. People have got a lot of expectations from this government, particularly in the context of 10 years uh, misgovernance or bad governance or pal uh, policy paralysis and, and, and uh, on all these counts. Keeping all these things in view, if you see uh, basics of uh, this government and in the policy direction are very strong and sound and uh, uh, it has created uh, the direction very perfect. Though in the next four years, uh, how this government is going to take all these things, it is now well defined. Uh, one, the growth aspect. If you take the reviving the economy is the important thing uh, in these elections uh, for the people, which was discussed uh, by the people extensively. So this government, if you see in the last uh, one year, uh, this has uh, occupied the uh, important space and important time uh, of this government and its leadership. In terms of the revival, uh, critics would say that uh, the low international crude prices uh, this government had nothing to do with that. Uh, the fact that uh, there is a slight global economic recovery, again, the BJP uh, government does not have anything to do that, and therefore you are still in a lucky phase, benefiting from the tailwinds of positive global developments. How would you respond to those critics? You know, definitely these global developments have helped this government and they have worked in a favorable way. But does not mean that uh, we should discount the work we have put in in controlling the inflation. Now you have the inflation which is uh, uh, below 5% uh, retail uh, inflation. And wholesale inflation is down, negative. So all these things definitely the government uh, and the leadership has put a lot of efforts in uh, regulating the whole economy. And the most important thing, if you see this government and leadership has, has done to the country and to the economy, is creating the trust and uh, a kind of uh, definiteness. And this government is going to function in such a way. And this leadership is going to uh, work in this uh, way. These things, and uh, in the last one year, if you see uh, a scamless government and uh, corruption-free government, uh, it is not a mean achievement in this country after uh, so much uh, scandals and scandals. So, so, so scams effectively, what you are saying is that even if uh, uh, you know uh, economic growth has not uh, rebounded completely, we are still in a process of revival. The key message that I am picking up from you is that the fact that there is a corruption-less government and there have been no scams, should be counted as uh, one of the uh, major achievements uh, of the first year of this government? Definitely in the context, you know, the mandate we got, in the background of that, the scams and scandals and the UPA government failure, and in that context, uh, this government is a uh, refreshing one. 
and uh, uh, you know government has given a governance without any of uh, such scams and scandals corporate india says that this is a government of slow governance you know this is because of the hyper expectations there is a lot of expectations from the government and uh, from the particularly from the leadership of narendra modi ji and uh, he is uh, seen as a person with uh, uh, you know a kind of ability to take decisions in that context because of the hyper expectations there is a you know a high level of expectations because of the people may be thinking in that but the foundations are well laid in this one year and uh, definitely whatever they are expecting from this government would be happening in the next few uh, months and years on the other hand uh, you have the principal opposition party uh, which is sort of been reduced to a small number in uh, in the lok sabha uh, and other opposition parties in the rajya sabha coming together uh, the bjp uh, says uh, inside parliament and outside that the opposition is ganging up to frustrate the popular mandate of the people by denying uh, the passage of bills uh, that the lower house of parliament the people's representatives are passing uh, but the criticism is that this is a result of the bjp's arrogance the fact that the bjp is not able to deal with manage uh, people in parliament manage parties in parliament and there is a adversarial relationship because of which the congress is uh, the opposition is hitting back at you no i see the whole thing in a different way the opposition parties are not able to digest the uh, whole thing whatever the outcome which has come in this elections bjp gaining the majority and it's won its ruling and narendra modi ji is uh, becoming the prime minister and uh, governing the country this they have not been able to accept and come to terms with and uh, they do not have the adequate numbers in the lok sabha to make any mark so in such a situation it is a, a, i can call it as a coming together to work as a, a kind of hurdle or speed breaker or obstruction uh, for the leadership which wants to implement the people mandate so in a way they are utilizing the majority or whatever they have got in the rajya sabha uh, to block the progress to uh, work as an opposition uh, for the uh, you know the translation of the people's mandate so if so you i see in that way so if you accuse the opposition of frustrating the uh, popular verdict and preventing uh, success in legislative terms for this government the other side uh, uh, w- would say that uh, the government is uh, adopting uh, many controversial moves for instance the debate about the land ordinance and you mr rao know that there have probably been uh, even internal voices of dissent uh, to some extent with regard to the approach on the uh, land bill uh, shouldn't the government have therefore first tried to take the opposition into confidence on subjects like the land bill you know there is always a kind of informal discussions and consultations in the parliamentary uh, uh, system of uh, governance and uh, our functionaries have been doing that but the important point we have to understand here is even in the land bill it is uh, not working against the previous thing it is only further improvement and there are concerns expressed by not just bjp leaders or uh, the chief ministers belonging to the bjp even the ministers and chief ministers belonging to the other parties and other governments they have expressed certain reservations about this present bill and uh, so so did the party fail to carry this message forward what you are saying now which is also been said by others uh, did the party fail to carry this message no party is uh, working uh, and party is in dialogue with all representative organizations all over the country and uh, um, our leaders are going and it is reaching out uh, um, programs and all these things are there and certainly we are not on the back foot Uh, on this issue there is nothing to defend uh, which we see as uh, anti farmer or anti against agriculture or anything uh, are uh, helping some corporate or uh, certain certain sectors or with vested interest nothing like that it is improving the bill 
uh, which is uh, going to help the rapid industrialization and uh, establish this country as a manufacturing hub, which is very important and which our Prime Minister um, has uh, uh, declared in many places. And uh, revival of economy is a very important thing, which uh, is a part of the mandate which we have got. So do you think this message will be acceptable to the people? Is the BJP planning to further take it across the country? Give us a sense, if you can, Mr. Rao, of how the, uh, uh, the perception battle, if I may put it that way, on the land, uh, land uh, amendments will be won. Wherever BJP has been governing, whether it is state of Gujarat or state of Madhya Pradesh, state of Chhattisgarh, you see the uh, you know, uh, gro agriculture growth rate has been well and above the average of the national uh, agriculture growth rate. So in this context, Next, BJP's performance is appreciated and accepted and acknowledged, and farmers know this. Second, there is no contradiction and conflict between industry and agriculture. We don't see, we don't put in that way. So, uh, industrialization is not going to work against agriculture. This is not the th way uh, we think or we would like to position as the, uh, you know this whole thing. BJP leadership is now. Uh, interacting with uh, farmers' organizations and uh, farming community at large, and uh, we are discussing various provisions. Th there is nothing uh, which is against farmers which this government is interested in bringing. Rahul Gandhi says, uh, while attacking the government on, on the land bill, uh, he says that this is a suit boot ki sarkar. He's also announced a 15 kilometer padiyatra in Telangana very shortly. Uh, uh, does that does that jibe hurt uh, 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 with, with, with Rahul Gandhi once again sort of coming back to mainstream politics? You know, with this kind of statements and uh, programs, no party is going to gain the momentum. This is not uh, the way I think to revive the Congress party after the great debacle they had. Rahul Gandhi has to become, you know, if he had any introspection, first he has to come and say what happened in the past. If he is going to Telangana in the last 10 years, what his government in that state had done. In Maharashtra, they were ruling. What they had done in Maharashtra. Why so many suicides were there. And this land acquisition uh, has not created the suicide problem in all these areas, whether it is Maharashtra or Andhra Pradesh or Telangana. So first he has to answer uh, what was the defect in the Congress thinking and it, they, uh, when they were in the government. First they have to, unless they come out openly and honestly, then uh, the credibility uh, deficit will be there. So, because you are in opposition and uh, you, you know, making statements and making these kind of statements uh, may be comfortable for you, but uh, people are not going to believe those things. So, you are saying Rahul Gandhi is not going to have any impact as far as the uh, sort of uh, voter mood, so to say, is concerned, although there aren't too many elections that are up uh, in the immediate future. Definitely, the impact is only in certain areas, certain quarters, uh, people at large, they have got complete faith in this government. And they have got complete trust in the Narendra Modi ji's uh, commitment, sincerity, and his hard work. So this government is not doubted or suspected. So, uh, you know, Rajiv Ga Rahul Gandhi ji, whatever he has done uh, in the last few days, and uh, maybe his tour in Telangana. I don't think, it, it, you know, those things will definitely raise the questions against Congress. Let's sort of uh, turn to one of the other aspects uh, that that is very crucial as far as the economic debate is concerned, and this is the goods and services tax. Uh, Finance Minister Arun Jaitley on the floor of Parliament said that 27% uh, as is sort of uh, one of the numbers for the combined rate is going to be very high. Uh, what is your view on, on, on this, uh, even as this subject has now gone to a select panel and therefore there is some delay that is likely to be? Because some people, some people in the smaller uh, business uh, sectors are worried about the impact of uh, GST making compliance very difficult and also 
uh, ordinary people are saying that uh, a rate of 24 25% is going to break their backs you know ultimately this gst is uh, the subject which is discussed in, in the last few years in entire country every section has participated in that and there is a, a kind of uh, consensus uh, among the political parties whether you are in the government or you are outside the government whether you are in the opposition so this is a, a long overdue bjp government uh, after coming into power it has uh, you know taken all these concerns uh, into consideration and even parties and leadership uh, you know if uh, and, and and this government also is committed for the democratic process that is the reason if it is going to some committee and ultimately we have time and uh, that all those things if uh, need to be discussed again so those things can be discussed but we have to understand a different uh, tax framework uh, have you know people uh, across the uh, spectrum they wanted to evolve and that the gst is the outcome of that uh, drive so i feel um, gst is completely based on the consensus built over the years and uh, this government is uh, very much uh, interested and committed to evolve the consensus and evolve that kind of thing and to implement the gst bill which uh, leadership has already committed on the floor of the house since we were talking about uh, the fact that there are some elections uh, not in the immediate future but after that uh, what are the prospects for bihar if i can ask you you know if you compare the performance of the government the center in the last 11 months and now one year definitely there is a positive feeling all over the country that uh, this government is uh, you believe there has been no decline in that uh, in that uh, positive feeling no i don't think there is any kind of decline uh, you know this government is seen as a, a sincere uh, government and uh, interested in uh, translating the commitments and it stands for good governance and uh, and every particularly the honorable prime minister is seen as a person who is committed sincere and hard working you are absolutely right so uh, in uh, that Rao, context uh, uh, the prime minister's ratings have not dipped uh, and in fact they stand uh, pretty solid uh, but there has been uh, so called internal dissent you have uh, a leading voice a bjp opinion maker if i can say arun shori who who sort of uh, was extremely critical of the government's uh, first year performance you know these kind of uh, remarks and statements are going to help the leadership you know raising the bar further it is not going to hurt the government and our leadership is not discouraged by those things because these things are it means you have got uh, expectations from this government more and more so it should not be seen as a negative comment it should be seen as we are not satisfied we have got more expectations from you what you do you say about uh, these uh, uh, voices of dissent that keep cropping up uh, does it at all uh, 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 reveal something about dissension within the bjp or is it like some some other uh, people from the party have said that these people are uh, not even on the fringe of the party they are, and they are certainly not inside the core you know certain people today they, they are not uh, part of the political functioning of bjp but i do not take that line i would like to say that this uh, uh, dispels the feeling that bjp and its leadership is not democratic you know if there are certain mm, kind of disagreements then it you know people are expressing their but opinions. why are they going to the press to express those disagreements you know the, the, you know certain times i am not saying that the, what they are doing is correct 
इफ समबडी इज इन द पार्टी पार्टी हैज गॉट एवेन्यूज टू डिस्कस ऑल दिस थिंग्स बट इफ समबडी इज गोइंग एंड डिस्कसिंग आउटसाइड ही मे नॉट बी वर्किंग एज ए डिसिप्लिनड वर्कर ऑफ द पार्टी बट हिज एक्सप्रेशन आर आर वेल टेकन एंड वी विल यूज इट इन दोज कामेंट्स Uh, and check our uh, performance nothing uh, is going to we are discussing this issue not in the context of bjp discipline we are discussing these issues in the context of the performance of the government so uh, those comments uh, if they have any value definitely we will discuss and we will examine and we will scrutinize our performance okay uh, 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 a couple of last questions mr rao uh, i'm going to ask you to sort of uh, uh, tell us about the future uh, especially in the south of india where uh, one state which was a bjp state was lost uh, in another state uh, you have uh, which you are yourself responsible for uh, there is a belief that there is some growth uh, in the party there give us a sense and a flavor of how things are uh, in karnataka and tamil nadu as far as the party is concerned what lies ahead in the future no after forming the government at the center then party has discussed various issues and uh, its expansion plans and all these things we have got a powerful mandate and powerful backing and particularly young they have supported overwhelmingly this uh, leadership and uh, bjp so how to convert this uh, uh, response and support to the uh, and consolidate into the party base and uh, particularly in the areas where we have not been strong uh, the south is one area where uh, historically bjp has been weak and uh, bjp uh, has not um, uh, gained a foothold there for the so many years and this time we might not have um, got the significant number of seats on its own but definitely the, if you see the vote percentage it has increased uh, in certain states 20% 25% alliance uh, we got 25% and 30% so we have planned all these things after considering this now south is a important uh, area and uh, along with the east uh, in the south uh, tamil nadu andhra pradesh telangana and uh, karnataka karnataka we were once ruling and now we are in the opposition is a principal opposition party bjp and our performance as an opposition party is remarkable and we have been able to uh, put the government on coals we, we, we could uh, uh, expose its shortcomings mm -hmm. and uh, as a opposition party our performance has gone up well uh, definitely uh, we are aiming to make karnataka again free uh, from the congress government and uh, in the same way in the entire south area now congress as a national party its space has now come down and uh, now there is no congress party in all these states there are regional parties in uh, these states so there is a space uh, vacant uh, for the national political party uh, bjp can occupy that space and bjp can become a very important player in the mind space of the southern people thank you so much murli the rao for sharing your time with us today and talking to us about a whole lot of issues as this government completes one year in office uh, that's the word stability trust and credibility and that's the message that the bjp would like the entire global community to take away from the first year in office and the four remaining years that are still left ahead in the narendra modi administration if you've been watching thank you very much